Okay, let's program our first graphical user interface. So our first interface is going to be very simple. It's just going to have a button to toggle an LED and a button below that to close the application. So on the breadboard I have a single LED wired up to GPIO 14 and over on the desktop I already have an empty Python script in my chapter 4 directory. So I'm going to open that and this will be the only code along example that we'll do in this, ch in this chapter because programming GUIs, it gets quite repetitive and a lot of the code starts to look the same. So after doing this one example, we'll just walk through a few others and this will be a useful example just to show you how things are built from the ground up. So first of all, we need to do our imports and I'm going to import from TK inter. I'm going to import asterisk. That, that syntax just allows us to access the, the functions from TK inter without having to say, say, TK inter dot something. We can address them by their, their sub uh, function name. I'm also going to import TK inter dot font. And we're going to use a different GPIO library this time around. It might be a little more convenient. We're going to import from G, GPIO zero we're just going to import the LED function. So GPIO0 is similar to RPI.GPIO, except it comes with functions that are made for specific roles like LEDs, for instance. You might find this a little uh, easier to use. I will still need to import uh, GPI, RPI GPIO. So we'll do that now. And that's for its cleanup method. Just the way that TK inter works, when we close the GUI, we're just going to need RPI GPIO for its cleanup method. And we're going to say RPI GPIO set mode uh, RPI GPIO dot BCM. Okay, that's all our imports done. And this is going to allow us to build GUIs, flash an LED, and clean up when we close the GUI. So let's define the hardware. Uh, we'll be calling this LED and we'll access the GPIO0 function LED and we're using pin 14 for this example. Now we need to create the GUI itself. So this is what creates the major main window. So we're going to call that GUI definitions and we're going to call the window win and we're going to say that's equal to TK. So this creates a TK inter instance. This creates a, an object that we can build a GUI in. And we're gonna give it a title, why not? We can say win.title and we can say LED toggler. So the title is what appears across the top of the window here. Uh, let's create a font to, to pack into our GUI. So our buttons are going to have text in them and that text we can change the font. We can change its properties like making it bold for instance, just so they're a bit easier to read. So I'm going to create a font object. And this is where we specify what type of font it is with the family. So I'm going to choose the uh, Helvetica font and we can choose the size and the weight we can set to bold as well okay so that is the GUI definitions complete we can now refer to win as our GUI and we can apply a font to certain objects like buttons okay the next thing we want to do I guess is create the widgets themselves so the way we do this, I'll just make another section for widgets. So of course we're going to have two buttons. So I'm going to first create the LED toggle button. I'll call that LED button. And to create a button with TK enter, we invoke the function button with a capital B. So now that we are creating this button, we need to tell it where to go, how to place it. We need to attach it to some event function. So this is where all of those definitions take place within the constructor function. 
So I'm going to place it in win, which remember is our main window. Uh, I can give it some text to start off with. So we can say turn LED on and we can apply a font to that text. We can say font equals my font. Now we need to attach some command to it. So when this button is pressed, it triggers some, some command, some function. I don't have one yet, but we'll just fill it in as a placeholder. We'll say command equals, and the function we'll create will be called LED toggle. That's easy enough. We can even color this button. So as we start to build more complicated GUIs, we can uh, color code certain areas to, to describe their functionality. So I'm going to set the background equal to, oops, not GB, BG is for the background color. And I'm going to set that equal to BISC2, which is like a, a kind of creamy gray shade of white. And we can set the height equal to one. And I'll set the width, I'll make it nice and big so that's the dominating button on the interface. I'll set the width equal to 24. So that is a that is a big line because remember when we when we create GUIs, we have to explicitly define every property to create that that graphical object. So we have to select exactly how big it is, its color, what it attaches to. You can see that it takes a lot of text on the screen to create a reasonably simple interface. Now, we've created this LED button, but we haven't actually activated it. We haven't placed it anywhere within the, the graphical user interface. So we can do this in a couple of ways. And in this video, I'm going to place the button using the grid structure. So true to its name, you can think of the graphical user interface as being arranged as a grid and we can place things within that grid with coordinates or row and column numbers. So I'm going to place the button with LED button dot grid and I'm going to place it in row zero, that is the top and column zero as well. Uh, let's go column one just to demonstrate something. Okay, so that's the LED button. Now, that's going to trigger some command called LED toggle. So we actually need to define that function now. And I'm going to put that up here in event functions section. So we can define LED toggle and that's gonna take no arguments. And this is where we can toggle our LED. And GPIO zero provides really, really useful built-in functions for this kind of stuff. So we can say, if LED dot is lit, so that's just going to check if our LED is on. And of course, if it's on and we're toggling it, we want to say LED off. And just to show you something neat, we can also change the text of that LED button to change to reflect what the next action is going to be. So we can say LED button and we can access just this text part of the object by using this square bracket and quote notation. So we can say text and then we can set that equal to something. Turn LED uh, on. Yes, okay. So we can change the button text. And in fact, for any widget, we can change an individual property using this notation. If you want to change multiple properties at the same time, I'll show you a trick for that later. So that is, that is the case if it's lit. What we can then say is else and LED on to turn the LED on and then say LED button text. I'm just going to grab this and copy it because it's quite syntax heavy. And I'm just going to say turn LED off. So now we have completed the LED toggle 
function. Every time this button is pressed, it'll toggle the LED. Let's have a look. Maybe, maybe this will be able to run straight out of the box. Okay, there's our LED toggler window. And if I click the button over on the breadboard, the LED turns on and we can see that the text has changed in the button itself. So if I hover over it, you can see the color change to indicate that it's being hovered over. That's a nice touch. That's just default behavior for a button. And if I click it again, the text changes and the LED turns off. So the text is reflecting what the next action will do. And that's quite neat. So of course we don't have a complete uh, we don't have a complete script yet because if I close the GUI, we can see the LED is still on. So we need to do that GPIO cleanup trick from the Python chapter a couple of chapters ago. So to do that, I'm going to create a exit button and that exit button will trigger the closing of the interface and also cleaning up the GPIO. So I can very quickly grab all of this because it is very similar. And I'm going to say that this is exit button and exit button. Okay, let's, let's modify the properties now. So I'm just going to, to call the text exit. Uh, we'll give it the same font. We'll give it a different command, which will be, uh, let's call it close. And now let's give it something that really stands out. We'll give it a just a, a very solid red background. Now over for the dimensions, we'll make it quite a bit smaller. I don't know, let's, let's make it six for instance. And this will make it a, a much more minor element on the interface so that we don't you know, accidentally close it. And then we'll put it in row one. So starting from the top, we have the LED button in row zero, and then in row one, which is below it, we'll have this exit button. So that is the widget created and placed. Now, of course, we have to create that close function for the close event. So we can define close, and this is where we can just invoke rpi.gpio.cleanup. So that means that we can close the program at any time. And if our LED is lit, it will become unlit again, of course, and the GPIO pin will be reset back to its uh, reset state. Now we can also invoke a special tkinter command here, which is win.destroy. Not destroy, destroy, yes. Okay, so that, means that when we click this exit button, it'll not only clean up the GPIO, but it'll actually close the window. So we can give that a run. And there we have it. So we've got our window, we've got our title, our LED button, which still toggles the LED. But then we also have this exit button, which we can use to exit the program. Now there's one, one last thing that we haven't quite captured and that is this if i run the led toggler and turn the led on of course our led is on but if i close the window with this option whoops if i close the option with this little x close option here we can see that the led is remain remaining on and this is a problem because we want to be able to close the window intuitively using that built-in close button. So we need to capture another event, and that is something built into tkinter, which we can which we can pull out. So just under here, we can say we can say win dot protocol. So using the using the protocol. Uh, suffix of the object that allows us to access more behind the scenes events like the clicking of that close button and that is the that is the name wm delete window so we can grab that event that it occurs when the x is when the x is clicked and we can just attach it to our close function so we can attach it to close 
And that will exit cleanly when we hit that button. Now there's one other thing that I forgot to include, but it seems to have worked regardless. And that is that after we have created all of these definitions, as our project grows, we're going to need to include a win dot main loop. And that is going to loop forever. So that, that's what's going to essentially be the driver for our GUI. In this case, we've just had events triggering these functions, but this, this is what's going to essentially keep the GUI running. So if we run this now and save it, we can see that we can toggle the LED with no problem and I'll leave it on. We know that exiting with the red button worked, but if I click the X here, we can see the LED turns off, which means that the GUI has exited cleanly and cleaned up the GPIO. So now we know how to create a really, really simple GUI that just has a couple of buttons. In the next video, I'll walk you through using some of the other features.